Long time ago, a war between mankind and magic raged and destroyed the balance of the world. But then a hero appeared to fight for peace. In an alternate universe, another dominant species besides humans exists. They are called trolls who can be both good or evil. When a conflict arose between the humans who allied with the peacemaking trolls and the deadly evil trolls, the mightiest wizard of all, Merlin Ambrosius came forward to maintain the balance of the universe. He forged a powerful weapon called Troll Hunter Amulet that can give huge power to its owner. The Troll Hunter protected the living beings for years, but then he preferred to settle down in Arcadia Oaks, an underworld of trolls. There he fought in a deadly battle with the evil trolls and failed. Afterward, the amulet had chosen its next owner, who's a normal human being named Jim Lake. It wasn't easy for him being the first human troll hunter, but he had the support of his friends from both Arcadia and the human world. Together, they saved the world several times. But eventually, one day, Jim lost to an evil troll, and the amulet was destroyed. The malevolent wizards called the Arcane Order also saw the destruction of their biggest enemy. But one of the wizards named Nari joined the good side and the other two were hunting for her to activate the Genesis Seal. They want to use it to awaken the Titans and take over the world. Nari and Master Wizard Duxie are running away from the Arcane Order and they hide in the subway. But the evil wizards Belloc and Skrail find them and block their way. Luckily, Jim and his girlfriend Claire arrive in time to save their mates. Jim only has a shield to protect himself and may not last longer without his amulet. His target right now is to keep the wizards distracted until his team succeeds in launching the radiation on the train. Jim's friend Toby is given the task to pull the handbrake at the right moment, but he accidentally breaks the handle. The train jumps out of the track and heads towards the city center. Duxie summons a temporary track to guide the train and land it down safely, while Jim gets defeated by the wizards because he's nothing more than an ordinary boy without his amulet. The wizards pull Nari to take her away, but Duxie isn't ready to let go of her. The wizards start to attack the public and force Duxie to give up. He can't let Nari get in danger, so he swaps bodies with her. The police surround the area and capture Jim's teammates, but they use fake FBI robots to escape the jail. Afterward, they all get back to Camelot in Arcadia. Jim opens his eyes to find his mother nearby, who informs him about the severe injuries on his ribs. But Jim believes that his ego is hurt in a worse way. He regrets forgetting that he is just an ordinary boy who was a little lucky and found the amulet. Otherwise, he has no power. Jim's mentor, Walter Strickler, suggests that he rest for a few days and avoid getting in the battlefield to keep himself safe. He needs to accept his current limitations. Jim's mother has great news to cheer him up. She's getting married to Walter and wishes Jim to be the best man in the wedding ceremony. Jim congratulates them and looks forward to meeting his friends. However, he needs to be careful as his body hasn't recovered yet. The rest of the team is still working on the plan to get Nari back. Duxie's transmogrification spell will not last for long. Their alien allies have also returned from Acheridian 5. Alien Queen Aja is worried about the consequences and comes to help looking for a solution. Her lover Steve kisses her in excitement and surprisingly gets pregnant because for aliens, it only takes the seventh kiss to conceive a child. Steve wasn't ready for it, but now he's willing to take the full responsibility. Once all the team members have gathered, Jim joins them too for an important meeting. A wise troll called Blinky reveals the information he has gathered so far. The Arcane Order seeks to awaken the deadly titans who were the handmaidens to the birth of the universe. If these titans unite again at the center of the world, the earth will be reborn. All the living beings will be erased, the oceans will be dried, and the cities will be demolished. Then life will begin again according to the wizard's desires. This all is going to happen in Arcadia because it's the actual center of the world. The wizards believe that the earth was created to become a paradise, but humans destroyed the balance. Now their goal is to reproduce the earth in its original form. The arcane order initiates the breaking of the Genesis seal, but it doesn't work because it's Duxi inside Nari's body. The presence of all three members of the arcane order is necessary for this ritual. The wizards will not give up so easily. They nullify the transmogrification spell and bring Nari back to her body. Now Jim must hurry towards his next step, otherwise the Titans will awaken. His friends have tried to fix the amulet, but they are not sure if it will work or not. Jim is ready to take the risk and asks Duxie about the place where the wizards are performing the ritual. Jim and his team reached there, but the ritual had already started. Jim tries to operate the modified amulet, but it doesn't work at all. He fails and the rest of the team can't stop the wizards either. The universe trembles and the three Titans rise from the three corners of the world. The Ice Titan emerges from Greenland and is controlled by Skrail. The Land One awakes from the deserts of Brazil along with hypnotized Nari, and the Fire Titan jumps out of the Chinese Red Sea. Aja has lost all hopes and calls spaceships from Acheridian 5 so they can evacuate the Earth. She's not willing to trust a troll hunter like Jim who doesn't trust himself. Aya suggests moving to another planet to start a new life. 
other team members don't agree with her, they can't just run away like cowards. This conflict raises a heated argument and Jim has to settle this somehow. He asks everyone to trust him, even without the amulet, he's still the troll hunter and has been chosen for a reason. First of all, they need to find a way to fix the amulet. It has the same magic as the Excalibur, and so if they can find the Excalibur, the amulet can be operated. Jim gives this task to Stuart and Krell, while Claire, Blinky, and Duxie's Kitty Archie travel to the troll market in order to meet troll dragon Zongshur and get his chronosphere. It's a special stone that can be used to fight the Titans. Meanwhile, Jim and the remaining team members head toward the North Pole to try their best in stopping the Titans as long as possible. Archie unites with his father who reveals that Chronosphere holds the power of time infinity and it can be used to see the future and past. However, it's almost impossible to get it because Zongshur never let it get out of his sight. Archie is still ready to try his luck and goes to meet Zongshur along with his teammates, but the evil dragon foresees their arrival on Chronosphere and sends his guards to capture them. Meanwhile, Duxi and a troll are fighting Nari's Titan and Jim is facing Skrail's Titan along with his parents. However, both titans possess immense powers and don't even get scratched by the continuous attack. Duxi uses his magic to temporarily hold the titan to the ground and ask the troll to attack. But in this risky attempt, the troll loses his life and the titan escapes. Similar events happen to the other titan. Regardless of not having any weapons or powers, Jim still tries to fight with the titan. He almost dies in this attempt, but Walter saves him at the last moment. He's deeply impressed by the bravery of the young boy and apologizes for not trusting him. But it's time for Walter to play his part. He requests Jim to take care of his mother, and he grabs the bombs for sacrificial attack on the Titan. Walter and the Titan blast into thousands of pieces, and for a moment it seemed like the enemy was defeated. Unfortunately, Walter's sacrifice goes to waste because the Titan regenerates into original form. Jim takes his mother back to Camelot, but she still motivates him to fight till the end. That's what Walter loved about Jim. He never gives up. After the farewell, Jim rides the ship with Aja and Toby and proceeds towards Belloc's Titan in Hong Kong. Claire and others are taken to Zongshu, who starts thinking about a cruel punishment for them. Suddenly, Archie flies there and snatches the Chronosphere. Once they get what they need, the team leaves the troll market. Meanwhile, Jim reaches the Hong Kong bridge and witnesses the Belloc's Titan taking over the world. But Aja and Toby seem calm because they have a secret weapon. It's a huge gun robot operated by an alien named Varvatos. He fights efficiently with the Titan, but it will not be enough. Belloc attacks with a continuous beam of lava which melts down the gun robot. Luckily, Varvatos evacuates in time and survives. Claire and Blinky have also returned, but Archie is left in the troll market with his father. Claire creates a portal and everyone escapes to a safe site. They got the Cronus Fairy, but only Nari knows how to use it. Duxi wants to try communicating with her again and asks Claire to locate Nari's Titan. The genuine bond between Nari and Duxi overcomes the magical spell and Nari is back in her senses. She tells Jim that Chronosphere unfolds the time in different ways and the troll hunter will understand its use when the time comes. Afterwards, they teleport to fight the Skrail's Titan. Nari uses her own Titan to fight and wins eventually, but her life is lost in this attempt. Two of the Titans are destroyed, but it cannot stop the rebirth of the Earth. Blinky finds an important piece of information according to which a single Titan is enough for the rebirth if it unites with the Heartstone. Now they must stop Belloc from doing that. They reach where the Titan is and the Excalibur is brought there too. Jim tries to pull out the legendary sword but fails. Nari said that he will need the nine configurations for this but Jim doesn't know what it means. He looks up at his friends and realizes that they are nine configurations who can activate the Excalibur together. Everyone puts their hand on the stone and Jim pulls out the sword. He takes the gem off the Excalibur and sends it to be joined with the amulet. Meanwhile, he fights the Titan without armor. Belloc knocks away his sword and pushes Jim to the ground. She was about to kill him, but the repaired amulet saves his master. Jim uses it to become a troll hunter once again. Toby comes over to help him too. He uses the anti-magic radiation generator to weaken Belloc, and Jim gives the final blow. The enemy is finally dead, but Jim loses his best friend and his other loved ones too. They don't even feel like celebrating the victory and moans at the loss. Suddenly, Jim remembers what Nari said about Cronus Fairy. Jim hits it with his sword and brings out the powerful gem. He says farewell to his friends and travels back to the time when he has not found the amulet yet. This is the only way to bring his friends back to life. However, Jim will not let his loved ones get hurt ever again. A true hero is not the one with the most powerful weapon. He's the one with the bravest heart and the ability to take the right decision in the worst circumstances.